Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Great Ace Attorney 2 Resolve. It's been a while, huh? But today, we're back in the courtroom, and honestly, what took me so long to answer you plainly? I had to get smart. I had to learn what it's like to be British. <laughs> no, I did not go to Great Britain in the 1900s. That would be ridiculous and very expensive. But what I did learn was just a lot of the accessory knowledge about this setting and timepiece. But uh, yeah, I also recognize that it's been like, what, two years since we covered the first game? So before we begin, a quick refresher. The game opens to a gunshot. One Professor John Wilson has been shot in a restaurant, and it appears Ryunosuke Naruhodo is the culprit. We enter a Japanese courtroom and defend ourselves, and also discover the true culprit being one Jezza Brett but she's not charged in Japan for her crimes, and her motive for killing John Wilson remains unknown. Kazuma, Naruhodo's friend, is sailing to London to study law, but during their travels, Kazuma is killed in a tragic accident on the boat. Also, Sherlock Holmes is there, and he's freaking hilarious. Inheriting the dream of his late friend, Ryunosuke, and Susato arrive in London and aim to study law to revolutionize the judicial system in their homeland. But to officially become a lawyer, Naruhodo must defend the... Very suspicious, Magnus McGilded. We succeed, sort of, as the trial ends in a mistrial, and McGilded is given a non-guilty verdict, but is shortly burned alive in the courtroom right after. A few chapters later, turns out, McGilded was guilty after all, and now when Gina Lestrade may go to jail for unknowingly collaborating with him. The trial's really long, it's really good to friggin' watch the main video, but Gina gets a non-guilty verdict and a conspiracy involving music boxes containing codes holding government secrets is discovered. While the code is being played in the courtroom, Sholm's adoptive daughter and roommate, Iris Wilson, discovers the code she heard, in fact, is Morse code, specifically of the Japanese variety. This cipher includes four names, Asaugi, Shin, Gregson, and Wilson. Whether we like it or not, we've just uncovered a government conspiracy involving a recently deceased friend. We have a lot of questions and not a lot of time for answers as our assistant Susato will be traveling back to Japan, and the credits are right behind her as the first act of the Great Ace Attorney comes to a close. Obviously, I skipped over a ton of crap, but that's the general gist of where we were last time with these characters, and all I gotta say now is let's just hop in. I can't wait another moment. I never did get those British lessons, though. Like the accent training, they want to like, they want to like do like 800 bucks. I'm like, F that. So I'm going to, you know, it's going to be a lot of British people in this uh, game that are Southern. Oh, I guess we're back in Japan. <gasps> no. Standing here in the bright sunshine, looking out over the vast ocean. Those days in London seem like a dream. But I do miss my time in England's vast capital. Her dad is dead? No! You know, he's flourished into a truly wonderful lawyer. I've no doubt that at this very moment, he's fighting some noble cause in court. Forgive me for taking so long to come to visit you. My life has been such a whirlwind since I returned. And no one could have predicted what has happened. Just two months after arriving home. I find myself faced with another awful crime? What? No, no, we're... Uh, wait, you, you! You, you're kidding me! She struck, she... So I came here she struck to again? ask something of you. Tomorrow? I shall be standing in court for the only time in my life. So, so, well, that's not technically true. You've as a lawyer. Oh, what? I gotta let her finish. Susana's a lawyer, and it's against that stupid Brett. You're kidding me. Oh, she's. Oh, never so mind. Please, I ask for your guidance. I just can't believe she showed up in the story. Again. Wait, it's Cosmo's grave. Why is he buried? He, oh, I guess he, his corpse just got transported. Okay. Yo, that's a start, y'all. The adventure of the blossoming attorney. 
So Susato's starting us off. All right. Begs the question, though. What's going on in London? Yeah, we'll get to that. But didn't we, like, derail a train or something to, like, see Susato off? I don't know if I remember. Anyway, 13th of August, 8.26 a.m. Supreme Court Judicature. Defendant's antechamber number three. Ooh. Here I am again. After nine months. The Supreme Court Judicature of Japan. I feel so nervous. But I must steal my nerves and find a way to compose myself. Uh, oh, thank God you're alive. Ah, good. You're here. Doesn't do for lawyers to be late. Ah, uh, yes, um, good morning, sir. I hardly recognize you. You cut a fine figure, counsel. What? What does that mean? She cut her hair? Oh, no. <laughs> well, you look as white as a sheet. Those white eyes aren't doing you any favors, either. Uh, uh, oh, dear. Um, the truth is, I'm so incredibly nervous. I feel utterly nauseated. I almost wish that I'd never been born. Oh. You can't say that to your papa. Goodness. Not the sort of thing a father hopes to hear. <laughs> I must say, what are you trying to do to me? God. Okay, so I do recap some of the characters. Yujin Mikutoba. Professor of medicine at the Imperial Yume University. Man who, earlier in his life, traveled to Great Britain to study the latest advances in forensic medical science. And of course, he my papa. <laughs> uh, excuse me. Uh, oh, hi there. So I'm just gonna come out and say it. I'm not totally shocked by a lot of these characters. This particular, this character, I'm gonna meta game for a minute. She has a lot of fan art, so I knew about them going in. Sorry, I don't, I don't know anything about her. Just you know, I've seen the design before. Would I be correct in thinking that you're to be my lawyer? Oh! Oh, I thought of- Why did I assume it was Susato being in court? Oh, um, yes. Uh, that's right, miss. Well, I, um, I want to thank you for agreeing to represent me. I swear. I swear on my life. Uh, it's a complete fabrication, the whole thing! Oh, okay. I can't really get a read on her. Oh, her name is Ray. Ray Membami. That's gonna be hard to say. I'm just gonna call you Ray, okay? Born the same year as I. And my greatest friend, Oh, Wait. This is like eerily si similar to chapter one of the first game. I guess that's the point. Though unusual for a woman in our time, she works at the university research laboratory helping my father. Oh, okay. She's smart, I guess. And sadly, she's the defendant in today's trial. Accused of committing a truly awful murder, against a British woman with a pet duck. Was a duck sentient? We still don't know. We'll get to that. Are you feeling all right? Since we started talking, you seem, well, to become a little flustered. Oh, oh my. Well, um, it's just that you look so gallant and dashy. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, sorry. And when I fall under your intense gaze, it, well, that makes me feel rather bashful. All right, then. Shoot. I, I'm a little jealous of so <laughs> Goodness, I, I don't think she knows. Does she know that this is Sasato? She hasn't realized who I am. Oh my gosh. <laughs> ah, just like Yamato Takeru, it would seem our little plan for this trial is going to work. Uh, it's a scheme? What? What do you mean, Professor Mikotoba? Yeah. If even your best friend can't see you through the disguise, I think we can relax. Disguise? Wait, can girls not be lawyers? Is that what's happening here? Maybe not. Yes, I never tried dressing this way before, of course. So I wasn't sure how convincing it would be. But this does make me feel a little relieved, as you say, Father. F-f-father! <laughs> Oh, oh, ah! Is that, is that you, Susato? I, 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 uh. I'm so sorry I didn't say sooner. No, 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 what are you doing? What are you doing? That varsity uniform, that varsity cap, that varsity cape, that badge. Look at you. Look at, for all the world, you just look a student of the Imperial Yuma University, a male student, a boy, a... 
I'm not going to get any further into the descriptions, but I'm so glad you think so. <laughs> it, it means all my preparations have been worthwhile. I woke at four this morning to make a start. Wow. She's really... I mean, should we be even saying this? Like, the ruse is working. Hey, you're not going to snitch on us, Mr. Guard Guy, right? Like, oh, that's a girl. Holy crud. Could have fooled me. But I don't understand. Why are you dressed like that? Well, you see, um... It was the only way. The only way she'd be permitted to the Supreme Court to take on your defense. There it is. My defense? Uh... uh yeah, we're living uh, about a hundred years ago here. Wait, even more so. Jeez. Never before in my life have I felt so frustrated at having been born into this body. Courts in Japan are barred to women. We're not even allowed to set foot inside the courtroom, despite the fact that the laws of the land apply to all people, male and female alike. Oh, that's right. In the first game, she never went in. Ooh. I mean, just how Brett went in, but I guess because, you know, she was being the accused, so I guess Ray's allowed it also <laughs> really be a fair trial if you couldn't testify. But women are forbidden! Just for today, I'll be leaving my true self at the courtroom door so that I can act as your lawyer. Oh, Susato, you go to such lengths for me? Of course, you're my greatest friend. I just worry that I... Shouldn't be the lawyer you deserve. Was no one else going to take the case? Oh my god, I have so many questions. Oh, I have complete faith in you. Ray. Oh gosh. <laughs> it's so strange though. I mean, you're such an accomplished judicial assistant already. And yet you bec because you're a woman, what a wretched reason. I mean, why shouldn't you be allowed in court? You're so gallant and dashing. And did I mention the badge? It's so gallant and dashing. Ah! Uh, Ray, we're kind of being incognito here. Please don't look at me like that. Those flushed cheeks and doting eyes. Ah, oh, I'm... I'm sorry. It's just, you really do look so dashing. Have I mentioned that yet? And about that badge. Okay, I get it. Um, uh, you mentioned that quite a few times. <laughs> <laughs> you should be pleased. I mean, you look convincing as a man. Da Father, that's not very nice. I am pleased, though. I think. It certainly helped to bolster my confidence. Mm. Ray. The the lengths people go to to protect their friends from getting thrown in jail or possibly home. You're managing to put on a brave face in all this, but I can see through it. I've noticed how your shoulders are slumped. You're trembling ever so slightly. It's because she didn't do it. I mean, maybe she did. I don't freaking... Like, we'll see the evidence first. I know they're best friends, but, like... Maybe you have to have an evil best friend in the first act of the game. Like, anyone can betray you. That would, that would suck. So, you know, the story's probably not going that way. Sasado. You do believe me, don't you? Ah, uh, Like, the internal monologue wasn't saying otherwise. I... I didn't do it. I couldn't have... I mean, murder. I would... Of course you didn't. Although, can I see the evidence? I'm just curious. Like, you have nothing to worry about. Your conscience is perfectly clean. Isn't that right? <laughs> yes, it is perfectly clean. Like my plate. A girl's gotta eat, you know. <laughs> I have absolutely no doubt in my mind about your innocence. Because I know you, and the, the commentator doesn't. But, you know, I just... Which is why I'll stand by you until the bitter end in this trial. Whatever happens, I'll be on your side. All right, there you have it. Sasato's confident. Because that's what it means to be a defense lawyer. How how could I forget? I'm rusty. I'm rusty as could be. Jeez. That means so much to me, Sasato. <laughs> Defending counsel. Court's about to begin. Get in here. Uh, oh, golly. I guess he's uh, a foreigner? That accent. You go in at once, too, Ray. If you're late, the judge will be hesitant to pronounce he was guilty. Oh, golly, um, stand aside, I'm coming through. <laughs> just like barges the doors down. I'm innocent, I tell you. I don't think I've ever seen her run so fast. Oh, my God. Uh. Well, Sasato, certainly surprise your pops. Going to such lengths to be admitted into the courtroom. No prior experience being a lawyer. Hey, she, you know, she's seen a couple trials. How hard could it be? 
There's simply no other way. That's all there is to it. But father, you haven't told her, have you? I mean, I'm right in assuming that Ray doesn't know how I came, how it came to this, huh? Yes, quite. I've kept that information from her. It would only worry her. She found out that no other lawyer would agree to take the case. Oh, it's like I thought. Didn't want to burden her with that. Is that true? The reason why every other lawyer is refusing to take the case? Is it really because of who the victim was? If it's Giselle Brett, I guess nobody wants to be involved? Well, thank goodness. It's not the circumstances of the case. Ah. Uh... We should hurry on now. As you know, law is in my field, but I'll do what I can to support my student. Thank you, father. Aw. Is he actually going to, like, be our step-in? I don't know. For, you know, Susato in our HOTUS trials. I'm Susato Mikotoba, a judicial assistant. Eight months ago, I accompanied a student of law on a study trip to Great Britain. But two months ago, due to unforeseen circumstances, I found myself back in Japan. I'm a little nervous. I don't know what's going on here. How many times have I wished that he were here? I wonder. Still, I have no choice but to steal myself for the trial ahead. Now yeah, you got this. I mean, I'm a little worried because this is the sequel, and usually cases are harder in the sequel. Great Ace Attorney 1 was already kind of a hard game, but ah. Wish me luck, Mr. Navarroto. <laughs> Come on. Like, it's, it's also the opening trial. How tough, tough could it be? But I'll, be, I'll admit. It's been a while since I've had to use this noggin to solve some trials, you feel me? I'm, I'm gonna be a little too rusty. Here we go. Oh, frick, it's pain. Aww. Who else would be here? The court is now in session to hear the trial of Ray... Meme Bambi? No, Mambami. Ah, yes. The prosecution is fully ready to proceed, Your Excellency. Whoa. She actually lo She looks... Like, I don't know how to say this, but dang. You look good, bro. <laughs> Defense counsel, are you ready? Uh, yes, Your Excellency. We are ready. Ah, uh, yeah, yes, ready. Well, she certainly looks the part of the defense. <laughs> uh, counsel, according to your registration details, your name is... Um... Ryutaru Noru. <laughs> Change one character. Is that correct? Quite the sin. I'm um, sorry. Oh yes, I had to come up with a suitable male name for your little venture here. <laughs> you? It was. That's the best you could come up with. I'm afraid to say I simply put down the first name that sprung to my mind. <laughs> well, counsel. Uh, um, yes, that's right. That's me. I mean, yes, I am Ryutaro, he who has vowed to uphold the pride of the great Naruhoto clan. Ah, well then. It seems Ryutaro may need to consider how better to uphold his manly act as first and not overdo it. <clears throat> well, those wild, wide eyes aren't doing you any favors either. Just relax and listen. Naru... Hoto? Oh. Now, fresh face in the courtroom. If I'm not mistaken, ooh, an easy win. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> but the name Naru Hodo. What would that perhaps be? You may be thinking of Ryunosuke Naruto. Recently, uh, currently in a Britain, uh, part of a study program. That is, uh. I'm his cousin. Yes, cousin. Uh. That's right, Ryutaro here will be studying in the provinces, but was called to the capital for this trial. I assure you, in matters of law, his knowledge rivals that of the any Tokyo preeminent lawyers. Any of them, yes. What a pitiful display. Have been rejected by every lawyer in the capital. The accused has to go to a country boy. Uh, how dare you? Sasada was very... Oh, you effed up, Ray. Oh, my God. Sasada was every bit as gallant and dashing as any of the Tokyo attorneys. I won't have you making fun of her. Her? Uh, I mean, um... 
please be careful, Ray. I swear to gosh. Hmm. What an unrefined tomboy we have here. But I wonder, is your gallon and dashing lawyer up to the challenge of defending you? His wide, skittish eyes very much suggest that he is not. Um. I mean, I use these wide, skittish eyes to read very fast, and I'm so nervous I could cry. Now that I'm standing in his shoes, I'm starting to understand what Naruto-san goes through. And like it or not, eyes are one to flint. Oh, come on. It's fine. You're doing fine. Right? She's got this. Oh, come on now. The case to be heard on this day is a matter of great significance to our national interests. In fact, it would be reasonable to assume that the outcome of this trial may very well affect the very future of our empire. Because of the British... Japanese relations. Crud. Just like that trial nine months ago. Did you, did you, do you remember that? I mean, you can watch the videos again for a refresher. <laughs> and yet, for proceeding of such importance, we have this unknown yokel by the dock. Ugh, oh, dear me. Hmm. Perhaps this will be an appropriate moment for me to assess the defense, to determine whether you are sufficiently competent to practice in this courtroom. What's your alternative? I goof up and she gets guilty anyways? Like, I know it's just to hear the new tutorials, but like, come on. Nine months ago, when a certain other Naruto stood where you're standing now. God, I miss the music so much. I've got goosebumps. I got goosebumps on my goosebumps. The same judge tested him as well. Oh, dang, I forgot. Whoops. And even though he was just a student at the time, not even of law, he passed the test with flying colors. So, what I'm trying to say is, you got this, uh, son. Ah, uh, that feels weird. For a trained and experienced judicial assistant like you, it shall be easy. Yeah, so easy, father. <laughs> so, counsel, do you consent to answering some simple questions? Mm, Ryutaro, wake up! All right, it's time to prove myself. Oh, dang, she got it down. I'm gonna do that too. Anyway. Yes, you're excellent. Ow, that hurts so much. Please do make them simple, though. Very well. To start with, you will state the name of the victim. Uh, that's simple. How I, it's like, how could I forget my childhood friend? Uh, uh. What's the matter? Uh, Ryutaro? Come on. You know your best friend's name. You've, I'm, you've said it more than a handful of times. Now that I'm standing in his shoes, I'm starting to understand something else Naruto san goes through. Like it or not, minds are want to blank. Oh no! Relatable for me. It's not surprising, really. It's your first time in the position in, in that guise. Even a bright spark like you is bound to flicker and falter. And a little under the circumstances. Can we just talk about how Mik Miko Tobe is so effing... He's not like, come on, son, get it together. Like, no negative, reinfor like, negative reinforcement with him. What a dad. And that mustache, too. But ladies, he's taken. <laughs> oh, dear. This is a dismal failure. Don't fret. You need only to use the knowledge you've gained as a judicial assistant to overcome the problem. All right, yeah, the record. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> yes. The answer will be amongst the key information on the court record. That's all. All right, we got it. Just check the court record with... That button. Okay. Oh my god. Oh my god. I'm the one who's messing up. He's asking for the victim? Not the defendant. Bro. Oh. Hey, yo, I'm the one that's blanking, but okay. We obviously know it's Jezal Brett. Like, how could you how could you ever forget this character? Hands down the most frustrating part of the first game. I'm like, okay. She kills a guy, gets away with it, question mark? But now we know. They're just saving it for the sequel. I like that, but we have Ray, Mamambi. I mean, you know, I was gonna like check, you know, I was gonna check these out. We also have the post mortem report. Time of death just after 2 p.m. Trauma victim lung from a knife blade. Dang, she got shanked all the way out here? Shoot. Only a single wound was identified. Okay. We can actually just look at it verbatim. You know they're gonna hide some clues here, so. Cause of death, single deep stab wound from behind, piercing a lung, resulting in a fatal hemorrhage. Death would have occurred within minutes. 
extreme meiosis, pupil constriction. I was observing the victim in both eyes. I'm not familiar with that uh that terminology there. What could cause pupil constriction? Other than like doesn't she wear a mask? No, she has like a she has like a mask on a stick. Cause maybe like, you know, if your your eyes were like I don't know, like someone got behind you and like attacked you with like a towel or something, but that clearly was not what's going on. Anyway. Back on topic, Jezal Brett. That's the lady that died. Oh no. Her voice is gonna give it away. I mean, you know, I got kind of a high voice too. The name of the victim who lost her life in this case is Miss Jezal Brett. Hmm. He is good. <laughs> the idea of Ouchie being so easily impressed. Jezal Brett. Why did she turn into Spongebob there? That was odd. A name that will never be forgotten in this courthouse. Or country, I'm sure. Hmm. Correct. On both accounts. And being a member of our Empire's Judicary, you'll be aware of the significance of that name. So, let me pose another simple question. As you know, Miss Brett was... A visiting student from the Empire of Great Britain. Why then is her name indelibly associated with our Empire's judicial history? Well, I mean, she been in here once? You know, that's pretty significant, right? Obviously, you won't have forgotten the case from nine months ago, right? You played the first game, right? You're not jumping into the sequel without, you know, they're connected, you see. Well, it's proving hard to recall the final points. Everything you need is in the court record. Obviously, I still remember. Uh, that was the start of everything. Jezal Brett. Behind the woman's student persona was the face of a killer. Yeah, she killed Wilson. For sure, I don't even need to look. Alright. Kind of nervous here, so... <laughs> I got the victim and defendant confused like an idiot! Nine months ago, a visiting professor of medicine at the Imperial Yume University was killed. And the culprit was Jezal Brett. Yes. She was a killer. We still don't definitely know why, though. I'm kind of mad. At the time, our country just signed a new treaty with the Empire of Great Britain. It was the midst of this delicate diplom diplomatic situation that the incident occurred. An Englishman, Dr. John H. Wilson, was shot dead. I believe he was an associate of yours, Professor Mikotoba. Oh, crap. I thought I was Mikotoba. Whoops. Yes. I was indebted to the man. He'd been my mentor when I went to London to study forensics. Indeed, it was I who invited him to Japan as a visiting professor at the university. Ah, naturally, the murder of an Englishman on our soil was a matter of the government wished to resolve rapidly. Hmm, and rapidly it was res resolved. Is that what it's called, resolve? First game, I mean? I don't know. Which is why a secret trial was conducted here at the Supreme Court. Now, Resolved and Resolve have complete different effing- oh, okay. So they do recap the first thing. Huh. Well, how about that? Student of the Empire Yume University was arrested on suspicion of murder. A second year language student by the name of Ryunosuke Naruhoto. Uh, God, RIP, dude. With the help of his best friend, a student lawyer, the accused conducted his own defense. Against that crazy hatted lady and exposed the despicable crimes committed by Jezile Brett. Well, Miss Brett eventually admitted to a crime. However, when questioned about the motive that drove her to take Dr. Wilson's life, she gave no satisfactory answer before the trial reached its conclusion. Immediately after the trial, the British government brought its counsel jurisdiction into play. You were unable to sentence Miss Brett, according to our empire's law. It was decided that she be removed to Shanghai, China instead. Neutral territory, I guess. Why Shanghai? There's a British consul court there. Hmm. Correct. I oversaw the negotiations personally. The date of her transfer to Shanghai was finally settled upon only last week. What? Dude, that means she... She probably got silenced. 
I, I don't know. Something's going on. Like, listen. There's a there's a giant government conspiracy going on in Great Britain. Like, I don't. Eh, I guess could she be tied to that? That's the vibe I'm getting. If she is like actually an assassin, right? Or gun for hire. All that remained of our empire's obligations was to see the woman safely aboard a steamship. Hmm. And yet, the very day before her departure, the English woman was killed! And only the day before. There's no way that's a coincidence. Dude, she didn't do that! Look at the- Look at those- Look at those traps, bro. She can't- She can't pull a gun trick. Come on! That will- Wait, no, she got stabbed. What am I thinking? I'm satisfied that the Council for the Defense is sufficiently capable of representing the defendant. Oh, goodness. I passed with flying colors. Yay. <laughs> I mean, thank you, Your Excellency. Over the first hurdle. Now, a summary of the incident, if you please, Prosecutor Ouchie. Why do I do that every time? Does anyone know for sure? As is you wish, Your Excellency. <laughs> The repugnant crime took place on the 11th of August, in broad daylight. Wow. Whoa, what is this? It's a sandcastle! Oh. And a sand shogunate. Well, that's also the castle, but... On the outskirts of the imperial capital, under a bright blue sky, at a secluded bathing spot by the sea, the incident occurred in a small beach hut, Erected for bathers to rest or change their cloths. <gasps> oh. So the duck wasn't real. Dang. Unless the duck also got killed. That's just that's just too vile to think about. Moving on, the case of death was a single stab wound in the posterior abdomen that pierced the victim's lung. An injury which proved fatal. So they were just... Stabbed in the back, in a changing room. Messed up. But we can't even do an investigation. Crud. Those were two people alone in the beach hut at the time of the victim's death. Miss Brett, in her bathing attire, and the accused, Ray Mombi. Accordingly, there can be no doubt of the accuser's guilt, especially when we consider she had a powerful motive. The police arrived rapidly at the scene and promptly arrested the young lady. What's this motive you talk about? What is that? Like, how? What were they doing there? Oh, don't start with the dots again. Jesus. Still? Still? We're still doing this? Well, that extraordinary description of events leaves me somewhat lost for words, I must say. It was surprisingly competent, given Ouchie's reputation. I'm just, I'm just saying. That's certainly true. The prosecution summary was full of words that raise an awful lot of questions. Th it was? Uh, I guess other than the motive. Oh, okay, that's what the game is saying. Thank God. Okay, as a lawyer, I really ought to bring up the prosecution counsel on what he said. What is this motive you speak of, sir? You're clearly exaggerating. Powerful motive is a blatant overstatement. Ah. Is the yokel boy using long words he doesn't fully understand? <laughs> I, what? I think the max there was three syllables, pardon? No matter. Let us put this to the accused, shall we? <clears throat> mean Bammy, you are research assistant at the Imperial Yume University, I believe. E yes, I am. I'm working with Professor Mikotoba in the laboratory at the moment. Well, no, actually, more specifically, you're in trial at the moment, but uh, I can confirm the defendant is an excellent assistant with strong sense of responsibility. Don't know if they'd stab a lady, though, I'll be honest. Uh, fascinating to hear. Now, another question. Prior to your work with Professor Mikotoba, whose research were you assisting with? Uh, um... I was standing under Dr. John H. Wilson. <gasps> Wilson, no! The visiting English professor who was murdered by Miss Brett. Oh, goodness! That's... I mean, you can say a lot about Ouchie. Like he somehow is balding but still has dandruff. But hey, he... He didn't... He didn't... He didn't... 
he didn't overstep. That is a reasonable <sighs> reason to consider, think that she did it. God dang it, bro. The accused had a deep-seated respect for her formal mentor, Dr. Wilson. Is that not true? Uh, yes. Dr. Wilson was a wonderful man. Interesting. Then tell the court what deep-seated feelings you had towards the English man who... Or English woman who killed him. Well... Obviously, I was filled with hatred for what she'd done. A powerful hatred that knows no bounds. <gasps> Don't say that, Ray. Oh, my God. Be careful, Ray. Oh, uh. No, no, no. Can't do that in court. The motive was revenge. Plain and simple, Your Excellency. Hmm. Even... Ah, eyes with my eyes closed, I can see that. <laughs> Sorry. Well, it was clearly a trap all along. How wicked of him to use Ray's undying respect for her former mentor like that. He truly is cruel. I must find out more details. And something we can use to bolster our defense. Um... As a lawyer, I really ought to pick up the prosecution on the council, what he said. Okay. The bathing spot. Being alone together. That's kind of weird. Ha I mean... You know, doesn't seem like a big hut. Why you? Why are you changing together? Is that the no? Mm, I think that's what they're saying at all. But if we're trying to find more details to use against him, and you know his, his assertion, right? Let's just talk about the location. Let's hear about that. You know, maybe there'll be a something to use there. Um, if I may, Prosecutor Ouchie. What do you want, you fresh-faced young yokel? I wonder, could you explain, please? You mentioned a bathing spot? Mm, well, <laughs> my apologies. Clearly, my moderny has confused the poor country bumpkin. You, dude, come on. Uh, the judge, <laughs> can you judge, can y'all make them a little more civil? Bathing spots are when you put water onto your body are the very latest trend in healthy practices from the West. We are told that bathing in the water of the ocean is curative, therapeutic, and excellent for the skins. No, that's not what I meant. I don't care. I was referring to the fact that Miss Brett had, to all intents and purposes, been found guilty of murder. Why would a known criminal have been relaxing by the sea? She could have swam away. Sorry. <laughs> For all time's sake, I believe. What? I'm so sorry? Miss Brett was to depart to Shanghai the following day. Her final wish, as it were, was to enjoy a day at our country's wonderful coast. What? And the British Embassy put extreme pressure on our government to comply. You get final wishes like that? What the? But are, on what grounds would we agree to such a request? Because... As usual, government is unable to stand to foreign powers. Matters of diplomacy, it seems we don't even have the courage to kind the whims of a known criminal. Is that based on reality? I, I, I That's a little far-fetched, I'm sorry. Don't look at me! Professor, it was the government who granted the permission, not me! I'm just a simple you know, prosecutor, come on. In any case, it was decided that with a dedicated detective on duty, Nothing could go wrong. Who was the detective? Hmm. But in fact, a murder took place. I, I said, don't look at me. It's not my fault. It was that young girl over there who did it. Not I. How very suspicious. Then prove it. <laughs> I don't think we're allowed to do that. <laughs> I wouldn't provoke the man if you don't need to. Uh, just saying. Right. At this stage, you need to gather more. Okay, so we do have to exhaust all dialogue. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. All right. Why were the two Why was she even there? How did she know she was there? Tell me more. Um, Mimbami-san? <gasps> yes. What is this? I mean, what was your name again? Narahoto-san, yes. I'm really starting to wish she made my alias Ryotaro Susato. That would have been easier to remember. Please tell the court why exactly you were present at the bathing spot with the victim in the first place and why you were alone with her. Oh, well, no, that's not true. It wasn't like that at all. There were other people present, 
a detective who was guarding Miss Brett for starters. I think I know who the detective is. Oh, dumb. It's been a while, but... I was just asked to accompany Miss Brett as a companion, that's all. What? She br oh, This sounds like a setup more and more. But let us be clear. At the moment of her death, you were alone together with the victim in the hut. You and no one else. Where's the detective? Hosanaga, where to dump you at? The truth is, there's only one reason why this young woman accompanied Miss Brett on her bathing sojourn. <laughs> if the accused last chance to take the victim's life. No, I mean, well, technically, yes, but because, as we all know, the following day would see Miss Brett extradited to the British authorities in Shanghai. And she'd lose her chance for revenge. The accused would never have the opportunity to dispatch her. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, this is a... It's a tough one. Kindly refrain from conjecture, counsel. Stick to the facts, bud. <laughs> I believe we all have a clear picture of the incident now. Despite her guilt being determined nine months ago, Miss Brett managed to avoid incarceration, instead continuing her research at the university, and possibly plotting away. Hmm. Obviously. Over that period, she and Ray would have encountered each other a number of occasions. Seeing the murderer of the mentor, for whom she had such great respect, enjoying such undeserved liberty. Yes, even if it was only temporary until Miss Brett's extradition, you can hardly blame Ray for her feelings of anger and resentment. Poor Ray. So, Your Excellency, if you be so kind to peruse this exhibit, a photographic print that shows the scene of the crime. The grim incident. Alright, we got a... God dang, this is fancy. Yes, thank you, Counsel. A tragic image. I'm just like, ooh, look at, look at the... Look at the tablecloth. Oh my gosh. The picnic basket. She's got multiple masks in the basket. <laughs> you never know when you'll need a spare. As you can clearly see, there is nowhere within the hut that anyone else could have hit. What about inside that dress? I don't know, that's possible, right? Come on. Under the tablecloth. They're really tiny. Like a gnome. The court will accept his photographic print as evidence. Okay. As I understand it then, the victim and the defendant were alone inside the beach hut at the time. This is deeply troubling, I must say. A finger of guilt points firmly at the defendant. Yeah, I can't even argue that. But that doesn't amount to much. Well, Your Excellency, naturally the prosecution has much more to its case. This is just the beginning? Uh, I mean, come on, we got this. I'm, not, I, I, I'm a little worried. Because I mean, I did mix up the defense and the, you know, the, 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 the victim, but yeah. We'll intend to prove the accused appalling actions beyond all possible contention. To that end, I can confirm that we have multiple witnesses to the crime, and quite darning evidence. Multiple witnesses? Wait, someone other than a detective? But who? That's bad. <laughs> oh, one of whom, I might add, is a highly respected police detective. Yeah. I assure you the testimony of these witnesses will leave no room for doubt. Well, let's get it. Come on, let's, let's see him. Come on. All this bluffing for, for what? Very well then, counsel. Bring forth your witnesses. Oh, he's actually going to do it? We're not going to stall? I, Toketsuchi Auchi, have been waiting for this moment. Uh, s sorry? <laughs> oh, yes, I haven't forgotten that trial nine months ago here in this very courthouse when that irreverent little boy utterly humiliated me. <laughs> well, uh, I didn't realize his hair changed. Wow. Ah, Ryo Nosuke Naruhono! The, yes? This insult to the Auchi name will never be forgotten. Oh, crud, do I remember how new Cosmo's voice? I'll try. You've become seated with age, Council. But the old have to stand aside and make way for the new. I... Oh my god. And that wasn't even me! And it's the way of the world. May you never forget that.
Yo, that hit that hitbox is ridiculous. That wasn't even. Come on. Hey, but it looks good. Like I, I mean, comparatively, like you don't. Come on. Strike the head of a samurai whose top knot has been cut, and the bell of culture, enlightenment tolls. What? Yes, on that fateful day, my former self died. I'm, I'm sorry for your loss. The start of your own mini Meiji revolution. Are you modernizing as well, Council? Silence with your very apt metaphors. Since I swore revenge back then, there has been a minor miracle atop my head. Observe the ouchie grow. <laughs> <laughs> You should be thanking Kazuma that he gave your hair back! You see, you see this seed of hope sprouting forth in the barren expanse of my crown! Oh yeah, I didn't notice before. I, I, I think that tiny growth is trying to tell me something. Um, I'm afraid I can't really see it from here. Where is this hope exactly? I said silence! Today, I face another yokel student of the Naruto clan. Well, I will vanquish you. And my victory will be fertilized for the seed of hope atop my head. You have been warned. <laughs> With that, the prosecution calls the witness to the stand. Looks like the stakes are high on both sides in this trial. The prosecution and the defense each have much to lose. What are you talking? I... A haircut is hardly a haircut is hardly comparable to raise life, father. I'm not. I we're we're larping, honey. Don't call me that. I, pff, frick. Oh, what you you boy? Hey, I read your book, by the way. You know, in the years we've been gone. You know, it it went a little long. It, it was kind of like long winded. I won't lie. Then again, I make hour long videos. Witnesses, please state your name and occupations for the court. Chief Inspector. Satoru Hosonaga, the... <laughs> he has a turtle. <laughs> I was doing my introductions. Please, <laughs> let me finish. <laughs> Don't. Imperial Police Bureau. I'm in disguise, obviously, so I can't be detected. And I am, well, the next big thing in books. An author renowned with capital and, uh... Yes, oh, soon to be sold out. This satirical I am a cat. A sensational success by Soseki Natsumi. I got my copy. I, who are, what are you doing? What the freak? Oh my goodness, a real life celebrity. Despite that, he doesn't seem to chip about it. Struggling student from the Providences, please. You needn't be in awe of me. I, I needn't? Oh goodness, he might blow my cover. I just realized, oh my God. It's only natural that you'd feel nervous in my presence, but all of you, please relax. Call me Soseki, even. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, what on earth is he, of all people, doing here? Tread carefully, Susato. That author fellow knows you from your last time in Lazen, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> he expresses you for, he exposes you for who you really are. Let's be over before it begins. Yes, of course, I know. <sighs> I presume Soseki-san won't have forgotten about me. I could certainly never forget about him. Yeah, no kidding. He is just, uh... I can't say I hate him or like him. But he's definitely memorable. Although he does seem to have changed somewhat in the six months since we saw him last. And I don't feel for the better? <laughs> and, oh yeah, Hosanaga definitely knows us too. That... Amazing outfit is hard to believe. I guess that's Western fashion? <laughs> Do I have something on my face? Uh, well, your glasses are f for one, although they don't seem to be helping, you see. Oh boy. Thank goodness he hasn't recognized me either. Ah, I suppose it's this disguise, is it? <laughs> I thought that appearing here in the clothes I was wearing at the time would make for more faithful testimony. He is dedicated to his job, isn't he? It is my guiding principle to carry out all testimonies flawlessly. Uh, well, I can appreciate why an Imperial Police Bureau detective might have been present. But what business did a writer such as yourself have on the scene, Soseki-san? 
Ah, well, you see, I had been asked that day to give a lecture on the morning of the incident in the Imperial Yume University Grand Lecture Hall, no less. Uh, Yume, you say? Uh, did you get lost and arrive at the beach? After the lecture, I had a very pleasant conversation with a researcher from the medical science department. The professor over there, in fact. Oh my goodness, we're coming full circle. My, uh, f f uh Professor Mikotoba. Yes, that's right. It was arranged by one of the newspapers. They wanted some story or other about two former students who studied Great Britain. Of course, being a renowned author, the press never leave me alone. Ah! The secretly spy snapshots, scribbling stories, and scrub scupper my privacy. Oh, so now that's why you're paranoid. Okay, <laughs> even in the courtroom, <laughs> so stupid. Huh. Okay. As you can see, the conversations written up in this newspaper here. Read it at your leisure, my provincial struggling student friend. I have plenty of copies. I wouldn't say I'm struggling. I mean, I am, but he practically threw the paper at me. Jeez. All right, okay. Let's check that out as soon as we can. Anyway, following my interview with the professor, the lady in question appeared and made a very unexpected announcement. I should like to go with everyone to see your country's coast. Those were her words. And you chaperoned her? Ain't she a little old for that? As I already explained before, Miss Brett was never taken into custody. She continued to work in my laboratory. On a strict surveillance, of course. At which utterance, the university immediately contacted the government to seek guidance. And the response was, Permit Miss Brett to go along as detectives accompany her. That detective I'm at liberty to divulge was me. Oh, Sanaga. <laughs> Thereby, the entire party departed cordially for the seaside. Jesus. Why'd she get all this special behavior? She's a criminal. I get that's the point. You're supposed to hate her, but that is extra. She's just Ace Attorney characters. Truly the worst. Sometimes. Not like all of them, like the villains. That's what I meant. Frick. It was extremely challenging to clear all other members of the public from the vicinity of the beach. Oh, you still got that cough going on, buddy? Uh, unfortunately, I'm at <clears throat> peak physical fitness at the moment, so I was able to carry out my duty flawlessly. Oh, Inspector Hosanaga, you are you are going to die. I... Do you have something on your face? Uh. <laughs> it's a beach towel this time. <laughs> I just realized. <laughs> oh, how insightfully I do apologize. Let me... Get that. Does that mean that you went to the beach too, uh, father? No. I don't have sandals. I'm not going to the beach and messing up my good shoes. Come on now. Fortunately, I'd work as well. <laughs> but unfortunately, of course, it meant that as my assistant, Ray, was invited in my place. Dang. I mean, this murder also could have been pinned on him if, you know, yeah. Dang. I guess that's why he's here. He just feels responsible. Of course, being a renowned author, I didn't like to decline the invitation. <gasps> ah, but if only I had! I'd never seen that awful sight! Relentlessly racked by remorse and regret. This guy, he's just so... He didn't even say that much stuff. What are you doing? Get him out of here. Seriously, the bit was good the first time, but... I must now ask you to present your formal testimony to the court. And will give an account for all you witnessed on your impromptu excursion to the coast. <coughs> all right, it's not like they're gonna lie, but... Of course, your excellency. Ah, relentlessly racked by remorse and regret. I, we heard you the first time. How bad could it have been? I mean, we, he, listen, it's a dead body. We know she had it coming. That's after all. I'm sorry. But you know what she did. Okay, before we start that cross exam. I'm just, you know, I'm just gonna look, I'm just gonna look around. You know, I got some feathers. Got uh some cranberry juice. Okay. And did she pack anything weird in her purse this time? No, but it looks empty. 
Okay, okay, not a lot going on there. As for the news, <laughs> I didn't know the dab was that. Uh, was that? Was that old? <laughs> you know, it's it's good to see Soseki with a smile. I don't know. I don't know. He's grown on me for whatever reason. Soseki knots me. He just follows me in every game I play. I swear. On the day of the incident, I was ordered on a special surveillance assignment in this disguise. I just managed to catch that crab who suddenly heard a cartowall from behind. Wait, what What about a, a, a crab? What, did he say cab or crab? He said crab. What? I ran to the beach hut at once when I found the pair in question. Yes, yes, that young girl was astride the Englishwoman, dagger in hand, and she stabbed wildly. I saw blood on the blade. It proved to me that she stabbed the victim multiple times. How'd you know that, though? When, doesn't the autopsy report show it's only a single strike? Hmm. Indeed. It does appear from this testimony that both witnesses have saw it. The very moment of this heinous crime. <laughs> now, if you would recall, I promised evidence as well. What phrase did I use again? Ah, yes, it was darning evidence. I love that word, darning. What? What have you there, Cancel? Is that a so-called fountain pen? Correct, Your Excellency. I found her at the scene whilst examining the body. It appears that in her dying moments, with her final ounce of strength, <clears throat> the victim clutched a piece of evidence that would positively identify her killer. What? How? Your Excellency, if you would cast your eyes over the photographic print of the crime scene once more. Uh... She just drew in the sand, though, right? Goodness me! Yes! The victim is clearly grasping something quite deliberately there in her hand. What's the big deal? Like, what the... That fountain pen. And if you would kindly examine the pen, Your Excellency. Uh, ah! The owner's initials have been engraved into the embodiment barrel. Or... M. Ray Mombi. The initials of the defendant! Oh! Oh, no. Oh, my stars. This sucks. I mean, I'm sure there's a perfectly logical explanation. Come on, just channel Saul. We just gotta channel Saul. That's all we gotta do, y'all. The fountain pen will be admitted immediately as critical evidence. Dumb. I mean, maybe, you know. She just stole the pen cap, and yeah, I, I, uh, I can't even, I can't even fish my, I can't even find a way out of this. Have I omitted anything? Decisive testimony. Check. Darning. Evidence. Double. Check. <laughs> There's a bright sky outside the guardhouse today. Perfect weather to ascribe guilt, I feel. Hmm. If I don't, I don't understand. The prosecutor Ouchie of nine months ago, he totally sucked. <laughs> More or less what she says, okay. Counsel for the defense, you may begin your cross-examination. Yeah, yeah, we're not done yet. Naruhodo san up now, no time for sleep. Uh, no, Naruhodo. <laughs> uh, right, that means, yes, me. Uh, is there another Naruhodo in the courtroom? I'm checking. Nope, I, I don't see any. <laughs> Actually, there isn't a single Naruto in the corner. Cousin Ryotaro, please pull yourself together, please. Please. <laughs> say it again. All right. I've seen this countless times as a judicial assistant. Find inconsistencies in the witness testimony and prove they're lying somehow. That's all there is to it. That's so easy. Oh my gosh, anybody could do it. Even, even a fake like me. That's how a real lawyer would handle all this. So let's see what I can do. All right, boys, buckle up. Ouchie ain't... I mean, this is pretty rough, like, at the start, but... So was the first trial in the first grade ace attorney. On the day in the incident, I was ordered a special surveillance assignment in disguise. I don't think that's a lie. I want to know about this crab, though. 
It's probably pointless, but if it's a funny little story involving a crab, you never know. But, oh, oh, crap. Then again, we also need to look at this evidence. This one. We can't actually zoom in on it. Okay. The pen and that victim were found grasping her hand. It carries RM. That's it. Hold it. So tell me about this crab. You're described the victim's scream. Presumably, Soseki-san. Wait, what? The... Uh, in more literary terms, you might even say it was a scream that could pierce the heavens. Kia! Or the like. <laughs> what the frick? <laughs> of course, that's just a metaphor. We renowned authors are want to describe things so. I know what a metaphor is. It's not like that's... That wasn't at all like this in England. What is happening? Anyway, I spun around at the noise and the beach hut immediately fell under my gaze. The beach hut. Okay. The area is popular with government ministers. Many have seaside retreats there for rest and recuperation. Okay. Locals are prohibited from entering the area, so it's always very quiet. The beach hut is a simple structure erected as a place for people to change or take refuge from the sun. All right, and only politicians get to go there. How fair. Hmm. Although the English woman commandeered the hut for herself, which meant that I was forced to change into my swimwear on the sand. I, I imagine that was rather embarrassing for you. Very. Anyway, I tossed the crab aside and headed for the beach hut at a run. Uh, or in more literary terms, I decrabbed and beetled off. What <laughs> <I> was? <laughs> All right, this is kind of funny. This is a term. They they did their homework with his writing style. That fits. I I have a new appreciation for Natsumi in this game. Post uh you know time break I guess. But I ran to the beach, hunted once. I found the pair in question. All right, who was standing where? Just curious, cause that you know that could matter a lot. Wait, by pair, do you mean to say, but how could that be? Uh, no, no you, you misunderstand. Obviously, I meant the victim and the defendant. Mimbami-san? What? Uh, oh, it would have been helpful if you could just have said that from the outset. Ryotaro, that's kind of assumed. You jump to conclusions. You have to expect to fall on your face sometimes. But, but you forced her to jump towards the conclusion. What the... F Dear me, pining, pinning your hopes on such an outside chance. Foolish, very foolish. I, it really was, if it really was an outside chance, I wish I'd realized that before I said something silly. So, Inspector, why don't you tell the court how exactly you found the aforementioned pair in the hut? Uh, well, it was a sorry sight, a really grisly scene. I parted the Noren curtain hanging in the doorway, and stepped inside only to see the defendant leaning menacingly over the lifeless body of the victim sprawled on the sand. <coughs> <coughs> this voice is very hard to do. My glasses are nearly cracked at the ominous sight that met my eyes. How thoroughly appalling. How dare this Ryotaro bring that, <laughs> force you to remember that. He doesn't appear to be lying there. Thanks for spelling that out for me, game. Well, Soseki-san? Can you confirm what Osanaga-san is saying? I wonder. Ah! You'd like a literary man's opinion, would you? Mm. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess. That young girl is astride the victim, dagger in hand, oh, as she stabbed wildly. Is that absolutely true? I don't think... Because, hold on. Yeah, right there. Single stab wound. I'm, I'm calling you on your bluff. I think that's it. You actually saw her do it? Really? Oh, indeed, I did. That terrible specter. That terrain. That terrapin inspector. The bloody torrent. The author's torment. The, uh, eek. <laughs> every sight and every sound is still carved into my melancholy memory. That was my impression. At least. As a future literary sensation. Future counsel, what on earth are your shrill, eff effeminate scream? Uh, you can't really talk, Mr. Ouchie. I, what are you insinuating? I, I'm a man, manly as a man in Japanese as, as anybody. I love, um, swords and 
hate quilts. Ah, uh, I wonder if I might interject here, Soseki-san. Something you said is troubling me. That was my impression. That were your words right now, yes? Uh, well, you know, I'm I'm one with words. I, I know many. <laughs> so, do you mean to say you're not confident you really did see what you described? I don't even know what that sound was. What the, I'm getting two in a character. No! I mean, yes! I mean, ah, I know what I saw! My ears didn't deceive me when I heard that scream. Hence my eyes she didn't deceive me either. I could describe everything I saw vividly. I could publish it in all to tomorrow's newspaper serial. Alright, that's... <laughs> he's going... He's being kind of extra. Like, I, what the dog? It sounds as though the next installment of I Am A Cat may take a macabre turn. Oh, it does. It does. I'm sorry. I just... Yeah. I think this is a fool's errand. The more we press your author friend on what he saw, the more entrenched he's going to become. Oh dear. That's quite awkward. Hmm. Well, despite that, I think we got him. I saw blood on the blade. It proved me that she stabbed the victim multiple times. Oh, he, he says this too. They're both in agreement. Strange. Is that just because they've, you know, they're in the same courtroom together and they're sort of bouncing, you know, testimony off each other? Let's probe. Shall we? She was stabbed multiple times. How can you be so sure? Yeah, very simply. The blood of the blade. The... What? I'm no stabbing expert, but I think if you get stabbed once or twice, the, blood, the amount of blood on the knife might be just around the same. When I entered the hut, I saw the defendant holding the blade raised up in the air. Yes! Yes! That's right! I saw that too! Uh... Oh... Well... And I noted that there was blood on the blade already at that point. In other words, the victim had already been stabbed at least once by the time I rot. But that's... Come on, Hosanaga. He set me up. He's going easy on me because he recognizes Susato. Okay, I see it. That's right! I saw that too! I saw it! And the victim was already holding the defendant's fountain pen in her hand. All of which I... I can be sure the victim did not die instantly. Well, we got a piece of paper that says otherwise. Maybe a year in London was too much for him. Sounds like he's forgotten how to speak Japanese. <laughs> oh no. The logic of your argument is sound as test. Wh what? No, it is not. As I said, it's my guiding principle to carry out all testimony flawlessly. Perhaps there have been your guiding principle to protect the victim flawlessly. Ryutaro, stop! That's so... That's so mean! That's just my personal opinion, of course. Don't antagonize the witness. Oh my god. <laughs> He's a dying man! And a civil servant. Johnny, quit sucking up. But, uh, counsel! You refrain from mocking the witness! Yeah, I, do you, I'll, I'll be honest, Susato, you're out of line. I have just so many thoughts rolling around in my head. All I can do to stand here and wide-eyed and mute. Goodness, my dear. You must try to calm down. But how am I supposed to find an inconsistency with the two gentlemen are saying? It's simply impossible! I don't see why either of them would have any reason to lie. Well, just remember, witnesses may inadvertently lie at times. For various reasons, a misunderstanding, a mistake, an observation, a delusion even. A delusion? Oh, I see. Sorry, Hosanaga, you're effing wrong! <laughs> Bring it up with the doctors, buddy. Ooh. Uh, with that accusatory cry that just welled out from deep inside me, I think I finally understand. Every time Kazuma-sama and Naruhodo-san have stood here at this bench, the stakes have been very, very high indeed. What? What is the meaning of this menacing pose, Council? It's so eerily familiar. I'd like the witness to clarify something for me. <gasps> so seconds! So, what is go- What? Where? When? How? Why? No, not you, Soseki-san. The other witness. Inspector Hasunoga, it's very telling of his character that he thought he messed up. <laughs> uh, at me? In your statement just now, you said that the victim was stabbed multiple times. Yes, that's right. As I said when I entered the hut, the defendant was already standing over the victim. 
bloody knife in hand, like a murderous demon. And yet, that cannot be. Uh, what? Get to the point, please, Counsel. Well, here we have it. In the postmodern report. Mortem report, excuse me. <laughs> I guess it's postmodern. <laughs> it clearly states that the victim was stabbed only a single time. Ah! Oh. oh, crap. <coughs> so, basically, in other words, Hosanaga, you goofed up. It's clearly flawed. Your testimony. And so, Seki-san, <laughs> please chill. But also, you claim to have seen Mimbami-san in the throat, in the throes of stabbing the victim. This cannot be true. But I did wildly! It was so wild! Both you and the inspector confirm the same point. There was already blood on the knife that you saw the defendant holding. But they didn't see the action. It's plain as day. We know the murder weapon was used to stab the victim only once. Therefore, there's no way you could have seen what you saw. Ooh. True. Ooh. True. Then what exactly is your contention, counsel? Are you going to ever tell us? Well, I thought it was plain as sin, but, uh, there's only one logical conclusion. That Soseki-san, in fact, saw was not the moment of the defendant stabbing, but the moment that the defendant, in fact, withdrew the blade from the victim's body. Oh. Oh my god, she's so right! That explains everything! Well, maybe not everything, but... That can't be! <laughs> What is wrong with him? God, and that's coming from me. Excellent work, Susato. I mean, re, 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 not, uh, what was your name again? Christ, I forgot. You exploded at them without objection and proceed to pull them apart systematically. Objection. Alrighty. <laughs> well, this takes me back. Oh, the nostalgia. W what? I seem to remember your cousin staged a similar scene, which... Uh, what a little something like this nine months ago. A half-witted child with a half-baked objection, attempting to steal the show. I think you'll find he, uh, succeeded in stealing the show. I mean, he did win. Uh, there were certain similarities, I see, but said that so-called half-wit child managed to outwit the prosecution, who was only half head hair at the time. <laughs> My head is quite adequately dressed for the period, sir. Slander! In any case, all this talk of stabbing, withdrawing, multiple wounds makes not a jot of difference. It it kind of does. Why 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 would you say otherwise? Engage your brain, young man. With the accused first plunge that deadly weapon into the victim, that was the fatal blow. Right. Okay. And it was just that moment. Just as she withdrew that blade ready for next strike, that the witnesses saw, the knife was already tainted with blood. Because the accused had already stabbed the victim. Right, that's the next step. Arguably the hardest step, but... All you have successfully shown with your little display is you love to nitpick the author. For <laughs> is that the mustache author is prone to moments of extravagance. I... Sasato, I don't know. I don't know if that was that was not even that good of a like pushback. That was a little overdramatic. Oh, you'll, you'll be fine. I am in agreement with the prosecution. If the defendant was seen wielding the blade at all, that is sufficient grounds for actions to be viewed with suspicion. But if she was withdrawing the blade, then we are back where we started. Sorry. Consider this, young yokel boy. The student girl is innocent as you claim. Then why would she have pulled the blade from the victim at all? With a demon's cold blood composure, too. <laughs> you didn't, come on. <laughs> she didn't do that. The prosecution demands an explanation. And it better be good. Well, it is true if you take out the wound. Like, you know. If you take out the knife, she's going to bleed out. But, I don't know, she panicked? I'm really not that great at defense. I'm just like, ah. Yeah, it's, you know, it's a little weird, but... Why did Ray pull out the knife? Okay. Yes. Going for the jugular, I see. Uh, what does Father mean by that? I don't... I am not an expert on anatomy. Let the court hear your answer then, counsel. Truth is, I don't know. I have to come up with a plausible reason. Or this case is through. The reason the defendant pulled the knife. 
Hide the knife? Save her life? I mean, yeah! Yeah! She's like, oh no, that dirty rotten blade is gonna hurt her! But genuinely, if, I mean... Don't they say to keep... The knife in, though? I don't know, man, but she panicked. That seems good enough to me. She saw it and freaked out. Think about it. Because I can't. Please? Please think about it. According to the post-mortem report, the victim's death was not instant. That's correct. It's that she would have remained conscious for a short while after sustaining the injury. Indeed. Giving her the time to take hold of this piece of evidence, clearly indicating her kill- Then why didn't she steal the pen away? Why would go for the knife? I guess she maybe not- didn't notice that it was her pen? That- point is, being a medical research assistant, Mbami-san was compelled to act when she faced with the wounded victim. Incidentally, she pulled the blade out in an attempt to save Miss Brett. Oh, right, because she's a, she'd be smart and stuff. Think about it. She, you know, she'd be studying biology and crap, like knife, bad. Okay, got it. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a lot of dots in the courtroom. I don't think, die F up. Like, I don't like when you guys do this. <laughs> Did you hear that, Your Excellency? It would seem this is the best we can expect of this young yokel. Hmm. Indeed. I... It's just me, or does it suddenly feel much colder in here? I lost a point? For real? Your Excellency, if I may. Speak, witness. I would like another opportunity to testify. Oh, what's so sexy? Why are you crying, bro? In respect to the slipshod assertion just put forward by the yokel defense counsel, I mean. Y slipshod? I don't even... What is that? <laughs> it's like the most ugly laugh in the world. <laughs> <laughs> An excellent ID, Inspector. <laughs> Our young yokel hopeful has a modicum of knowledge when it comes to the law, it seems. Hmm. But in matters, uh, matters of medicine, he appears to possess not one iota of common sense. No! What? I... Listen, this was 120 years ago or something. I guess they don't know what I know. It's fine. Whatever. Very well, Inspector. I will permit your request. You will testify again before the court on the subject of the Defense Counsel's assertion. Ah, uh, yes, sir. I will do so flawlessly this time for sure. <laughs> okay. I guess Soseki's just gonna stay quiet. All right. We only gotta worry about one mouth this time. Pulling a blade from a wound without thinking could cause heavy bleeding. True. Now my argument doesn't add up. Yeah, why wouldn't Ray keep the blade in? Because that would... Minimize bleeding, right? Yeah, that doesn't add up. I screwed up. Dang it. Not basic knowledge that any medical research assistant with an ounce of sense would already know. In other words, there's no good reason why the defendant would have tried to pull the knife from the victim. That's not... <coughs> Forget the young student did have a motive to kill her. The man the victim murdered nine months ago. Dr. Wilson was the defendant's highly respected mentor. Motive, method, you have it all. Is... Is what you said true, Inspector? Could pulling a knife from a wound really cause heavy bleeding? Yes, I'm an expert on blood, you see. <laughs> Think of the weapon itself as a stopper. In the wound that prevents excessive blood loss. Until a doctor's ready to provide proper treatment, that shot stopper should not be moved, so they do know that. Dang it, man. Uh, oh, I see. Aha! This is why yokels should stay on, out of the... But is that for all injuries? Hear me out. She was stabbed in... The lung. If you get stabbed in the lung, I'm pretty sure... I don't know. No, because your your lung needs to it. It's like a balloon, right? It freaking needs to fill up, and then you know, freaking 
get big, get small. If there's a hole in it. Uh, so either way, yeah, that's that's kind of weird. That's really fishy. This is why yokels should stay on the farm. Even a quack from some obscure mountain village would have such basic knowledge. Uh... Anyone who's ever given someone a little poke with a knife and pulled it out again knows that. What the? What the frick? Oh well, I I've never stabbed anyone, you see, and I don't plan to. Or I I've never pulled a blade out of a wound either, so I I'm sorry for my inexperience. <laughs> Too polite. Of course you haven't. I didn't bring you up to behave like a bandit, did I? Father, is it true what they're telling me? Is this not a uh, gas lamping, or uh, how they say it? Yes, it's basic redemptive knowledge for medics. Ray would have been aware of it. If she were to claim ignorance of such fundamentals, that prove fatal in many ways. But then, why would Ray have done it? Could she have pulled out the knife in full knowledge that it might be fatal to Brett? I don't know. Until we get her on the stand, I don't think we're gonna know. Do we even do that? Is that even a good idea? No, we shouldn't get her to talk unless we absolutely have to. Ray never once mentioned anything about the knife to me. It seems almost impossible to believe, but... Could my friend actually have been... Sasato! Yes! Pull yourself together. We mustn't lose sight of why we're here. Uh, right. Council, it is time your cross-examination begins. Yes, Your Excellency. However, I must warn you that if your cross-examination fails to identify any issue with the established facts, I'll be moving to my adjudication immediately. All right, so let's do or die. We don't have much of a... I, I, can, I, I can't think of a single situation where Ray would want to pull the knife out. Genuinely. This stinks. Believing in my client and fighting for the cause until the bitter end. I knew it'd be hard, but this hard? I had no idea. Jeez. The most I can... No, I got nothing! I got literally zilch! Dude! Okay, I mean... I'm not gonna stoop to the levels of delusion, but really, how do you... How do you explain this? Only hint we have is the autopsy report, and I'm gonna be honest with y'all. Other than the weird thing about the eyes, I'm not seeing a lot. It's odd. This could also be a situation where, yes, there is a fake murder. You know, like maybe the knifing was a cover-up for how she actually died to explain these uh, strange constricted pupils. Could have been poisoned, you know? There is also a glass, but I feel like the autopsy report would have, you know, told us about that. So let's just take it one step at a time. Hold it. Press. I'm gonna I'm not gonna lie. I'm just used to hearing my own suicidal voice. This one, it's, it's throwing me off. You say doing it without thinking could be a problem. Does that mean that if you used dare care and attention, would it be alright? Ugh. I wouldn't have thought this needed spelling out, but no. Don't take out the stopper. Okay, okay, sorry. In other words, a medic would need to be present before attempting to withdraw the blade. Doing it without thinking would be madness. You just can't do that. Oh, thank you for clarifying. Uh, you see, counsel, when you act without thinking, the result is a bloodbath. Lesson learned. Back to the witness testimony. Okay, that was brief. I'd be surprised if it was this statement, because that just, like, implicates us further. Now, where there's no good reason for them to have to pull out the knife. No good reason at all. Can't think of a single one, because I can't either, and it's stressing me out. But the defendant has suddenly encountered someone she knew lying on the ground bleeding to death. I mean, the sight could have shocked her delicate sensibilities, causing her to remove the blade inadvertently. Uh, I really don't think inadvertently actions can explain this, I'm afraid. The woman is a medical research assistant. I can't imagine she would behave so irrationally. But irrational behavior is a woman's pr prerogative? Susano, are you being sexist? What? Oh, dear, you're one of those. <laughs> you have a lot to learn about women, young man. <laughs> This is killing me. Only a small-minded man could have such 
bigoted views. <laughs> oh dear, I may have adopted this male persona a bit too well. <laughs> God, I miss you, Ace Attorney. I managed to convey the basics now. That should cover the medicinal side of the argument. Okay, you, you, you know, hey, Hosanaga, he's looking out for the ladies. I pressed A twice by accident. God dang it. This is hopeless. I mashed the A button. Crud. I can't find a single crack in the testimony. If Ray knew that withdrawing the knife from the wound would threaten Miss Brett's life, I just can't think of a way to explain why she'd do that. Sasato, it's times like these when it's especially important to remember the fundamentals. Being evidence is what counts in the courtroom. Oh, of course, but I've been through the court records a dozen times. Let me do it again. Ooh, yep, yep, that's, that's, they're there. I uh, think perhaps you've forgotten something, though. You can take the evidence at face value. You can uh, and must examine it in great detail. All right, magnifying glass, pretty much spelling it out for me. Oh, you can look at the pen. Okay. There's a weird little emblem at the bottom. It has for the newspaper. Looks like, oh man, it's the symbol from the restaurant. Huh. I guess they're putting out an ad, I suppose. Okay. Doesn't look like anything, but maybe I should just press the button. Raukhaus? <laughs> England returnees. Tell all. This is the interview with you and Soseki-san, is it, Father? Whoa, that animation. It looks as though it was quite the exchange. <laughs> yes, he became a little over-animated. Relatable. When he was talking about his time in England, the photographer managed to capture the moment and his hand karate chopped me on my neck. <laughs> I do hope you weren't hurt. Oh gosh, Soseki-san. Is there anything else? Oh, we can look at the back. This is from Soseki-san. There seems to be an important article on the back of the page. Exclusive. Deadly poison stolen from Yume Medical Research Lab. <gasps> oh, father, isn't that your lab? What the? Let me see that. The poison was stolen? Oh, man. Is this this morning's paper that Soseki-san gave us? Are you saying... You didn't know? An embarrassment, as it is for the head of the laboratory, I didn't. I've not heard of such a thing. Where on earth could the reporter have gleaned this info? Come to think of it, there was no article mentioning this story in our paper this morning, was there? Hmm. It's a highly toxic poison. We've been working on the strictest confidence. I'd put Ray in charge of the project. Oh. Is... Hmm... Well, if Jezile Brett was going for that poison, why wouldn't Ray just tell us that? Ooh, maybe because it makes her look like even more suspicious? Ah, could be. Ray was managing the poison. If what's written here is true, it means that she tried to hide the theft from me. And moreover, the details were leaked somehow. What? I, I don't believe it. We need to read this article very carefully. Okay, poison article. Okay, 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 cool. Finally. Because I was about to say, like, no, nah, there's there's nothing in here that tells us everything. Okay. Exclusive. Deadly poison. Following a lecture you made by Soseki Natsumi on the 11th of August, coming to light that a very disturbing incident took place. A deadly poison being secretly developed in the university's forensics science lab was stolen. Even the smallest amount entering the body via the mouth or wound. Wait. Okay, just keep reading, hold on. Current methods cannot detect the newly developed chemical. The university would have to be consulted. Why is this poison being developed? <laughs> yeah, it's like, <laughs> what? Well, we didn't actually, th I mean, I don't know, they're kinda cool. Onset of systems occur in minutes, starting with impaired breathing and ending with acute contractions to the pupil prior to death, she got poisoned. Such symptoms will be suggestive of this toxin. It's apparently an entirely new synthesis of alkaloids and rumored to have been commissioned by the military. Oh god. Oh god. Okay. That still doesn't... I still can't explain why she would have pulled the knife. So I don't think it's that. I mean, this can be kind of iffy, but... <sighs> I think we just have to argue self-defense here. Genuinely. If... 
Jezal Brett had access to this very deadly poison and maybe, you know, could administer it via fountain pen, as ridiculous as that sounds. And yeah, she would have a reason to pull out the knife. She was defending herself. I'm a... Listen, there's as many holes in that argument as there are in Jezal Brett, but epic. I'm confident? <laughs> oh god. Or else there's only one hole in just Anyway, oh my god, moving on! There is one possibility. One very good reason why the defendant might have decided to withdraw the blade from the victim. What? Ah, uh, what on earth? The Yoko not only has a poor grasp for the law, but as a poor loser. <laughs> Tell us then what this possibility is. It's here, in the newspaper article. An article about a deadly poison having been stolen from the laboratory. Uh, oh my god. I forgot how, like, immediate the, the cutoffs are in this. The victim perished from a stab wound. Poison has no relevance in this case. But I was about to get to that. Prosecutor Ouchie, you will let the defense be- Yo, for the first time in Ace Attorney history, the judge backs us up? Whoa! I know I, I know I was like this. Yeah, my guy. I but, 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 but a newspaper article! The court cannot rely on that kind of hearsay with those wretched <laughs> publications. I, I mean, well, uh, counsel for the defense, I'm going to need some tangible basis for your claim. Will you indicate to the court precisely what part of the article mentioned affirms your assertion? Oh, right. Well, I mean, the eyes do match up with the cause of death. Thank you. Ray would never... Also, hold on! I know I'm going on Tangent City here, but... You do have two lungs! I know that's bad, and like, you know, but like... If you- if one lung gets punctured, yeah, that's- you know, you're, it's gonna collapse, but like, you could still live! Just saying. So... Yeah, then there's the bleeding. I can't figure out her- Ugh! This is a tough one! Ray would never have done something to further endanger Miss Brett's life without cause. The reason why the defendant pulled the knife from the victim's body is explained in the- <gasps> Poison stolen from the deadly- No, wait, hold on, I gotta check. Okay, the very end. Why is this being developed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why her- I mean, if she knew about it, she was watching over it, she would know the symptoms. Somehow, some way, Jezal Brett got poisoned by this. Why is the poison being developed? Read right here, sir. Um, according to the article, the development of the poison was requested by the military. Mmm, yes. A troubling revelation indeed. Oh, it's very worrying. And yet even more worrying is... <laughs> this trial. <laughs> is how this yoke was trying to manipulate the court with nothing more than rumors. I, uh, no, I mean, I... Uh, some rumors are based in fact! I feel sure Ray had a good reason for her actions. And I feel sure the explanation is somewhere in the newspaper article. Try reading the article again. I, I did! The reason why the defendant pulled the knife. I mean, hold on. No, it wasn't the... Yeah, yeah, okay. The symptoms of her eyes being messed up, that is on this line. Acute contraction of the pupils. Yeah. But on page two, deadly in tiny quantities would prove fatal in minutes. But if you take the knife out fast enough, she could have saved her life. Yeah, I'm locking that in. Getting a little ahead of myself. Y'all know, it's all, it's all good. The article reveals the following property about the poison in question. When the toxin enters the body, on a knife laced with poison, it's rapidly absorbed and causes death in minutes. Are you suggesting? If the knife used to attack Miss Brett was laced with this very poison, it would explain why the defendant, Mabami-san, would have withdrawn the blade as soon as possible. Wow, we actually got it. The truth is... It was an attempt to stop the poison from entering the victim's body. Ah, uh, you, you can't be serious. <laughs> this is complete and utter nonsense. Not at all. The defendant withdrew the knife blade from the victim's body, not to accelerate the woman's demise, but to save her life. And the prosecution cannot deny that possibility. Have you not read the post-mortem report? The cause of death was a hemorrhage. But if she did nothing, she would have died from the poison! Use your brain, Ouchie! Well, that's... That's because by acting quickly to remove the blade, the defendant prevented the poisoning. Oh my god. 
It's like I'm talking to a brick wall. This is clearly desperation and the weasel's last breaking of wind. What? That's a fart. What? Huh? Poison has nothing whatsoever to do with the case. As I believe the defense is well aware. Okay. He's just lining me up for this. Thanks a lot. We have no proof of the information. This wretched article is anyway reliable. Ugh. In that situation, what the student should have done is wait for medical assistance to arrive. But instead, you claim the suspect poisoned and took potential lethal decision to remove the blade. Yeah, you can say, man, it's like, if I was there, I would have done the right thing. You don't know that. Oh, wait, I was there and didn't. <laughs> she must have a strong reason for her suspicion then. Or the argument makes no sense. The symptoms. Okay, we got it. On what grounds did she do it, huh? Hmm? Why did Ray suspect the poison was involved? If you, if you want grounds, I'll give you grounds. Uh, a good cup of Joe would really hit the spot, but I don't see. Oh, you, you can't possibly. <laughs> no, what, what? From your expression, Council, it would appear those are not empty words. They're not. I got it. But naturally, as it stands on the court as a lawyer, you must be aware that words alone are empty and are of no value in our modern justice system. The court demands evidence. You got it. Coming right up. Hot cup of grounds. <laughs> you don't eat the grounds in coffee. I thought that for the longest time. Did you know that? I'm, I'm the only... Anyway. I've seen it many times. From a place at the side in the old Bailey. We got it. What evidence do you demonstrate? Okay. Uh, what evidence demonstrates a clear link between this case and the poison? The autopsy report. Look at the symptoms. Come on. Right? Yeah. I would ask the court to refer to the notes section of the post-mortem report. Extreme meiosis, pupil constriction, was observed in the victim. Uh, oh. Clearly a yokel with no ex knowledge of forensic science. I have no idea, so please do tell me. Presumably the fact that this condition of the victim was noted in the post-mortem report means that it's an unusual symptom of death. Not typical, as it were. Well. Under normal circumstances, the pupils dilate when someone dies. There was extreme constriction instead. That must certainly is unusual, <laughs> by definition. What are you doing, you yokel detective? In the newspaper, I'm a lawyer, by the way. In the newspaper article, there's the following information about the poison system. Onset symptoms occur in minutes, ending with acute contraction of the pupils. Uh, oh. If the defendant, upon seeing the victim stabbed in the back, happened to notice that the pupils of his spread eyes constricted severely. And yes, as a medical research assistant, she would have suspected poison, without a doubt. So she's safe. Hey, That wasn't so bad. Wow. Prosecutor Ouchie, I think you'll agree. This is very compelling information. <laughs> you yokel student and yokel professor. I live here. I live where you live, you nincompoop. God. Daft. I believe the defense has expertly demonstrated a credible reason for the defense actions. No. No! Yuji Mikotoba? Uh, yes, Your Excellency. I believe you are best placed in here to confirm or deny the veracity of the defense counsel's argument. You will tell the court the truth about the details reported in the newspaper, please. Is he gonna get in trouble? I really don't want him to, obviously, but uh, poison being developed at a university, what the duh? It pains me to admit it, but I'm afraid I don't know. What? 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 You don't know? The toxin was kept under lock and key in my laboratory, certainly, but I was unaware of any theft. Do you mean to tell the court that the reports of this theft are unfounded? Oh. I mean, he's doing the right thing. But man, it stinks. Your Excellency, without returning to the laboratory and investigate myself, I couldn't say, in good faith. Ha! Listen, that bumbling academic, what? <laughs> That's a weird diss. <laughs> Unaware of the theft of secret state research from his own workplace, until he reads it in the newspaper. I was off for the weekend, what can I say? I take full responsibility for the incompetence of my supervision. Father. A pitiful situation for a university professor. 
You should have more control over your students, rather than allowing them to go on killing sprees. Well, I... Uh, he's trying his best. It's unfounded. Ooh. What? No, Ray. Ray, don't. What are you doing? No! You gotta be... You are... What are you doing? None of this is Professor Mikotoba's fault. It's all my fault. No! Ray! What are you doing? Mimbami-san, you sent accused here. Outbursts like this will not be tolerated. But it was me. I was the one who noticed the poison were, were developing and been stolen. Well, okay, but as long as you don't confess to be, being the one doing it, you know, that's, that's fine. So you knew. I'd been placed in charge of overseeing the project. It was the day the professor and Soseki-san were reviewed together on the newspaper. That's why I noticed that some of the poison was missing. Just a tiny amount it was. <laughs> Sound like Jar Jar Binks at the end there. Why didn't you l no, let me know immediately? Ah, uh, I was scared. The whole project was supposed to be confidential. Some of the toxin had been somehow taken. So I decided to try to get it back before anyone else found out. Because I had a very good idea who the thief was. The thief? Who do you mean? Yes. It was that dainty English woman. Oh, dump. Daintily? I I mean, I guess. Jezile Brett? That's why I decided to join the little group of people going to the seaside. Inside the beach hut. I confronted Miss Brett. But she just sat on a stool at the back of the hut, smiling sweetly at me as if she knew she was untouchable. I would hate that too. I know it was you who stole the poison. Well now, whatever do you mean? I forget her accent, I'll be honest. It's been a while. And then, she suddenly got to her feet before falling to her knees in front of me and collapsing on the floor. That's quite the tale. That's when I saw the knife in her back. I couldn't understand what had just happened. And then a moment later, I was seized with fear. The pupils of her eyes had... They shrunk to tiny pinpoints. Oh my god. I don't believe it. And I'm on the defensive side. What the... In other words, you realize that the victim was suddenly... Uh, suffering the effects of the stolen poison. My mind started racing. I hadn't seen anything past Miss Brett's lips whilst I'd been with her. I... When I left one possible way of the poison to have entered her body. On the blade of the knife in her back. And that train of thought was what spurred you to withdraw the blade. Yes. If the amount that had entered her bloodstream was enough, she might still have a chance. That's what I hoped, anyway. Really. I... <laughs> I'm so sorry for staying silent all this time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Even I am moved to tears, but I won't show it. I have to be impartial. <laughs> oh, goodness. Your attempt to hide the truth of what happened is not something that can be overlooked, however. I have duly noted the courage of which you confessed in the end. Uh, d do I get some brownie points? Oh, thank you, mi your Mr. Excellency. Yay! It's barely perceptible, but I do think the balance has shifted a little here in the courtroom now. Oh my god, can you not just let us have anything, Ouchie? Your Excellency, do not be deceived. The victim just collapsed before your eyes. Come on! Well, Mambami Sami, if that is the case, perhaps you could explain how Miss Brett came to be stabbed. Uh, well, um, you have no answer because the simple truth is you stab the victim motivated by revenge. Uh, I... But you have conclusive evidence to prove your assertion? Uh, I mean, it's just so obvious. Do I need evidence? Oh, oh, all right, I do have some evidence, and it's very much conclusive. Uh, is he going to talk about the pen again? It was brief, but he hesitated for a moment there. I'm almost sure of it. You will produce the aforementioned evidence at once, Prosecutor Auchi. Perhaps some praise is due, young yokel student. What? What? I had imagined there would be no need for me to submit this ev- Oh! Uh, what? Someone took a picture in the act? That's what he's got right there, right? You ju- Oh! 
My goodness. Oh wow, we actually get to see her face. Crazy. But like, what the dump? What the dump? I mean, that doesn't prove that her story doesn't line up. Look, there's even a single sweat drop. Like, come on. Could a more darning shot exist? The cruelty in the air, the beach is almost palpable. Wait a minute, but who took this picture? Is anyone else, does anybody else think of that? Like, the evidence, more than any other, reveals the true intent, extent of the accursed, uh, murderous nature. For it shows the precise moment that Babami-san plunged her dagger into the victim's back. No, that's not true. No, 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 no. I don't believe it. Uh, I, I mean, th there's a lot of logical arguments to be made here. I think, I think we're, I think we're fine, honestly. Like, counsel for the defense, was it you who was responsible for that shrill scream that pierced my <laughs> Yeah, I didn't really commit to that, sorry. Perhaps his voice has yet to break. <laughs> These yokels are slow mind and slow to mature, it seems. Shut up, you old fart. I'll show you who's slow to mature. Punk. Punk hasn't been invented yet. I should I should slow down. Careful now. Sosato. You're breaking character. I'm so sorry, Father. Ugh, your true face is starting to show. Please stop with those girlish uh, screams. It is often said that a picture is worth a thousand words. And here we have ample proof. The court will accept this extremely cogent photograph at once. All right. But yeah, seriously, why, who, who took this picture? And we need to have them in court, too, to get their testimony. Because, I mean, come on, if they're, if they're... Given this game, they might be like, Oh, I'm just Jack, the photographer. Ignore all this tomato juice on my, <laughs> you know, coat. <laughs> like, you know, it's just a crazy murder out of... I can't believe he had a photograph like that up his sleeve this whole time. It's such a stark image. I'm genuinely lost for words. I am not, however. I don't understand. How did you... I mean, who took that picture? Oh, yeah, yeah, great. Right. Speak, speak your truth. Speak your truth. That's of no importance at all. Stop trying to divert attention. <laughs> Uh-oh, I'm sorry. No, I think it is. Come on now. That's an absurd thing to say, even for you. It's crucially important. Whoever took the photograph was a witness, and we must hear them. Come on now. Oh, well, yeah. I will uphold the defense's demands. The prosecution will reveal the identity of the person who took this photograph at once. Oh, he doesn't want to do it. I wonder why that is. Come on out, Mr. Ripper. Well, I'm afraid I can't do that. Pardon? You see, this print arrived at the Imperial Police Bureau. Anonymously? But there is nothing to indicate the sender's name. The provenance of the print is also unknown. Uh, goodness. Are you, are we to understand, Council, that it, in full knowledge of the fact that this photograph has the murkiest of origins, you brought it in the courtroom. You nevertheless believe it fit for submission? Come now. When you first produced the print before I noticed, you hesitated for a brief moment. Perhaps you knew it was completely, wasn't completely reliable, huh? Silence, you yokel student and blabbering professor. I, uh, what matters is the blatant truth of this print so eloquently expresses. But the defendant has already admitted to pulling the blade from the wound. What's there else to talk about? This is just a waste of time. Clearly, this is the moment the knife was plunged in the victim's back, but uh, the moment it was withdrawn, don't waste the course time with it. You, you can't prove otherwise. Really now? Indeed, without knowledge of who produced this print, we have no means of verifying the claim, and this scene it captures is without doubt the most compelling evidence presented to the co I... What? If the defense is unable to shed any further light on the matter, I believe the conclusion is clear. No. Shisato, this is the time for you to fight. If what you've established so far is true, then there can be no doubt. This photograph shows the moment that Ray withdrew the blade instead of plunging. Yes, we just have to prove that. But how? Well, hold on. Look at the amount of bl like blood on the wound, right? Doesn't that match up with how it was found? Think about it. 
well, no, that doesn't help me. Because I'm trying to argue, oh, you know, she, you know, the blood, like, splattered a while ago, right? But if this was the moment of striking, there wouldn't be that much blood. It kind of, like, you know, obviously has to trickle out. But I feel like that's one of those, like, eh. It's, it, it logically makes sense, but trying to convince someone of that, especially these guys are a little stubborn, might be difficult. <laughs> I can't do it again. Hold on. Share! Share! <laughs> You'll have plenty of time to rue your defeat on the slow train back to the provinces. <laughs> and to rue the day you came against Takeshi, ouchie, and Cordova. If I can't determine who took this photo, the trial is going to come to an end. There must be a clue somewhere. Somewhere on who took the picture? Uh, council? Can I, can I look at the picture? Hold on. Can I look at the back of the picture? No. But what is this weird crease up here? That's a little strange. Oh my god, you know what that is? That is a lens that is partially cracked. Dude! What does that tell me? Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. I think I saw this before. <gasps> oh, dump! That's crazy. That's... I love, I love this franchise. God. Moments like this are just so fun to capture, like, in the moment. But genuinely, yeah. Whoever took the photo that day. I do know. I have the answer. But we have to check who, who, who photographed that freaking thing the day. You guys might have saw the guy taking pictures at the university, right? This is about whether I can or can't come up with an answer. I simply have to. Oh, yo, I did it. I got it. I got it. The identity of the person who took this dramatic photograph print. I assure you, something the defense can and will reveal. Oh, you can't possibly. What well, as you boldly claim, if you can, please enlighten us. Unfortunately, I'm unable to present a name. I what early unfortunate. Oh, however, I am able to present evidence. The defense has a piece of evidence that reveals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we got it. What? Very well then, counsel. Present your proof. All right. The proof of evidence is, I hope this works, because we can't actually click on the, dang. I wonder if I would pick up on that if I didn't do a lot of like YouTube and stuff, you know, like look at my lens, like, oh God, is that scratched? Okay, no, no, we can't do that, hold on. I misclicked my bad, but this article, there is a connection. What is that? The newspaper again? Oh, uh, let's see here. Raucous England returnees tell all. Ugh. It's not the headline that's important here. It's this photograph, sir. And man, a crack in a lens is a pretty hard thing to replicate perfectly. If you look at the, this closely, you notice there are some white lines on the right side. Oh, indeed. They already caught my eye, it seems. <laughs> and what of it? A shadow of some kind from the branches of a tree or the like. I I indoors? What? There are no trees going in my laboratory, I assure you. <laughs> now, if you look closely at this photograph. What do we have here? Wait! That means whoever took this picture. Oh my god. Dude. Is that the real killer? Think about it. Exactly the same pattern on these lines. Well, well, uh, that tells us nothing. Yes, it's a shadow of some kind, definitely, from a branch of a tree. Th I mean, there wouldn't be any trees going inside a hut either, sir. Oh. That's quite remarkable about it, is that the two patterns are absolutely identical. How could such an extraordinary similarity be transpired? Well, it's pretty obvious. It's a camera defect. Yeah. Come on, guys. I mean, I guess they're new inventions for them. <laughs> eh, not that new. Obviously, must be due to a problem with the camera itself. With the photographic device? Yes, the magic picture box. We can confidently say the camera's lens must be scratched. Now, the scratched lens could unwarrant lines of the final product of the device. So, in short, the two photographs under consideration here were taken from the same camera. Uh, but, no. Oh. There must be hundreds of such camera devices here in the capital. I mean, 
it would be utterly impossible to identify the owner of each particular- We don't- <laughs> I mean, he's doing his job, but God, it's such a pain. <sighs> Ouchie. You get it. I think you're forgetting, Professor Ouchie. Or Prosecutor Ouchie. The newspaper guy- Okay, we- <laughs> Sorry, I was gonna be like a little bit of dialogue, but God, we we're there. We we've been there. The author of the article is the mystery witness of the crime. Oh! Well, where the heck is this guy? Min- Mini- Mini- Mo? What- What was that? Monomonopia? Mini- Mo! Oh! It's you! I see you were called a Rouskis England returnee. He loves to yell. What are you yelling about? You've already testified, dude! It's- Mini memo, I tell you, mini memo. Me, 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 mo. I'm so terrified. Why is he like this? What, what was that? Did you say, mini meno? Is that the, is that the guy that takes the picture? <gasps> There's a guy taking pictures of you. Ever since I returned to Japan, a reportee from the Show You News has been hounding me, following my every move, paparazzi. A reporter by the name of Raiten Mini Memo, writing mini memos. He's outing me till dusk of dawn. That explains why he'd be there. Now that he mentions it, I can't believe they made this little two-second gag an actual. I mean, that guy's got two. I, I should have assumed. Look at that model. It's so, you know, that takes a lot of, how many, how many tries are on that thing? I mean, come on. How many tries you got, Meanie Memo? A camera to the left of me. Oh, a notebook to the right of me. Oh, there I am, struck in the middle with them. Right in Mini Memo. So you're saying that this picture was taken by? Yes, his name, Meanie Mendo. Got him in here, your excellency Esquire. Officer, find this newspaper reporter at once. We will adjourn for a short recess in the meantime. Oh, yes, Your Excellency. As, uh, as you say, Your Excellency. Dang. From despair to total hope, I think we got this one. And one more thing. I want this knife, the murder weapon, examined for traces of poison. You will solicit the assistance of the Imperial University for the task. Understood? Ah. Uh. I guess. <laughs> he said, meh. <laughs> Mini memo. <laughs> well, what do you know? So Seki came out, came in pretty clutch. Oh, what? That's where it ends? Come on, man. 